My name is Phyllis Anna Fuller Hogue, and I'm making this recording especially for my little great-grandchildren so that they can hear my voice when I'm gone. I, I want my little great-grandchildren to know that I really love them and think of them every day when they're not around me. I don't think I can remember all of your names, but I want all of you to know that I do love you. I was born August 28, 1920. And I was born in the little town of Leeds, Utah, down in the southern part of the state called Dixie. My parents were Don and Lavinia Fuller, and they were such wonderful people. Their parents were early settlers of Dixie, and my parents lived all their life in that area. My mother. My mother was a very wonderful person. And she did influence my life for good. She was an angel, not only in disposition, but in her na maiden name was Angel. She was the daughter of Solomon Angel, who was a brother to Mary Ann Angel, who was married to Brigham Young. My dad was mostly a farmer, but he did all kinds of things to make money when he was a young man. The freight trains ended at a place called Milford, Utah, and dad would go up to Milford and get the freight that had come for people, for grocery stores and so on and so forth in St. George and other little towns, and he would take the freight down there for them. He also was a trapper, and he would go out in the <coughs> winter even and set his traps, and then he would have to go and pick up the, the bodies of the animals that he had trapped. And he would stretch them on a stretcher, their skins on a stretcher, and would sell them to a, a man who came around once a year to buy the skins. I have eight brothers and sisters. I'm the ninth child. My youngest brother, my brother next to me in age, was eight years old when I was born. Do you have any living brothers or sisters? No. My sister Verna is the oldest one, and she had two children when I was born, two boys. And I grew up in the same town that they did, and we were in the same crowd. So you're about the same age as your So I'm just a little bit nephews. younger than the youngest one of those two nephews. Yeah. Who did she marry? She married a man named Cliff McMullen. And how many kids did they have together? They had six kids, five boys and a girl. And did they always live in Leeds with you? They lived in Leeds for quite a while, all the time that I was there. Then after I moved away, Several years after they moved to Salt Lake City and ended up at, out at, he, he worked out at Hillfield. Okay. Three brothers that were born next, Clint, Stanley, and Reed. Well, let's talk about Clint. Well, Clint was the oldest one of the boys. Verna was the oldest child in the family and then came Clint. 
Did Clint marry? Oh, yes, Clint married. But he was an old batch when he married. He was in his 30s, and so was Stanley in his 30s when he married. But after those three came, Phoebe and Maida, my two sisters that I was always close to, they said that they helped raise me. Phoebe claims that her hip was out of shape all the rest of her life because she carried me around on her hip. But they were really good sisters and turned out to be my good friends as I was growing up. After Phoebe came Maida and then a brother Eldon and then a brother Oral, and he was my youngest brother. Stanley had a family of six boys. Uh, actually, I think Berta had six boys besides her girl. And Phoebe married a man named Bill Coleman and had two children. Then she got divorced and later came up to Salt Lake and met John Blue Mill. And they moved to Wyoming and had two more children. And they lived there, and John had a ranch, and they lived on that ranch for many years. Then they ended up in Lyman, the little town of Lyman. So you said Clint was a bachelor, an old bachelor when he got married. Did he ever have kids? He had three children. Three children. And after Clint was Stanley? Mm -hmm. And then after Stanley was? Reed. Reed, did he marry and have kids? Reed got married fairly young. Um, he married a woman named Helen Pope, and her father was an, a well-known architect in Salt Lake City. But she went down to Hurricane, which is close to Leeds, and uh, she was a school teacher down there. And she and Reed met. Fell in love and got married while Stanley was on his mission. In fact, quite a few things happened when Stanley was on his mission. My two sisters, Phoebe and Maida, got married. Reed got married. And I grew up. I turned from eight to nine and wanted to wait for my brother Stanley to come home so he could baptize me. So I did. So who did Maida marry? She married Bert Sullivan, who was a school teacher. And uh, he would go into different towns to be teaching that little t uh, school. That was the custom of the day for male school teachers to be sent to different towns. And he taught in... <coughs> Maybe a half a dozen different little towns. In southern Utah? In southern Utah, all in Washington County, which was the county which we were in, lived in. They <coughs> didn't, well, they weren't able to have any children of their own, so they adopted one, which they named Noel Lamar. He was a great addition to the family. And then after Maida was... Eldon. Eldon, and he married and had children? Yes, he married. He came to Salt Lake one time <clears throat> to do something, probably peddling or something. And he went to the Coconut Grove and he met a girl named Mary Carlisle. And they got married secretly. Ooh. And he came back home without her. And he was afraid to tell his folks that he did something <laughs> so impulsively. But finally he did admit that he had gotten married. And, and he came back up to Salt Lake and got married and took her down to Leeds to start out their married life. How many kids did they have? They had five kids. But there's an interesting little incident uh, connected with Eldon getting married, Mom had made this beautiful 
wedding ring quilt. And it was to go to whichever one of her bachelor sons was got married first. We all thought that probably Stanley would get it. But no, he didn't get it. Eldon was the first one of the boys that got married. How old was he? He was maybe 20. Okay. What was your brother's name? Oral. Oral. And how old was, and he got married? He eventually got married to a really sweet gal named Ruth. I've forgotten her last name before she got married. And how many kids did they have? They had three or four, four or five. And do you know where they lived or worked? Uh, <clears throat> Ruth was a Leeds girl, but they came up to Salt Lake and he got a job at Hillfield. And they moved to Cageville, or one of those little towns, and that's where they settled for the rest of their life. And they had a big family. So you said when you turned, you waited until you turned nine to be baptized. I did. So that your brother could baptize you? Yes, and he not only had to serve a two-year mission, but he was asked to stay an extra three months. So that added on to my age when I got baptized. And that was Stanley? Stanley, my brother Stanley. I was so fond of Stanley. He was always really extra <clears throat> special in my eyes. So... Why didn't you have your dad baptize you? What? Oh, I just wanted my brother to. Okay. Well, I went to a little two-room school. The schoolhouse had two rooms, the little room and the big room. There was always a male teacher who was also the principal of the school that taught the big room. And there was always a an unmarried woman that taught the little room. The little room was grades of one to four and the big room five to eight. When I was in the seventh grade, I was the only pupil. There were two, should have been two other kids in that grade with me, but Grant McMullen had uh, rheumatic fever and was out of school all that year. And Max Sola, who would have been the other student, went to California to live with her aunt for a year. So I was all alone in that grade, which was a little bit <laughs> hard, at least for the teacher, I guess. And then the next year, both of those kids came back to school, and Bert Sullivan was my teacher. My brother-in-law was my teacher that year. I was in my eighth, the eighth grade. After eighth grade, fortunately for us children that were living in Leeds at that time, and of a, an age to go to high school, the school board decided to run a bus, which they should have done years before, but they didn't. So we were the first kids in Leeds that had transportation to St. George to the high school. And that was really a very nice thing for us. But that first bus was something else. <laughs> it must have been 40 years old and half the windows were gone and it would break down on the way to school and the, uh, the bus driver would stop the bus and we'd all get out and go out in the sagebrush and build a fire, a big fire. We'd stand around that fire and wait for the bus driver to fix the car. It, I don't know, he was just a young man that lived in Leeds and he hadn't had mechanical training, 
But for some reason, he was always able to get the bus going. And we would all hop on and go to school. Be a little bit late for our first class, but but at least we got there. And maybe we smelled like smoke, but <laughs> from the campfire we were standing around. So you graduated at St. George High School? I did. Dixie High School, I graduated. I loved to swim. And every chance I got to go to where there was a swimming hole, any kind of a swimming edifice, I would go, go to do that. But the thing that I have loved the most in my whole life is reading. That has been my passion, my hobby and my passion. I've learned to crochet, crochet yep. and make quilts. My mother was a quilter, but I never was able to do piece quilts like she did. I was very anxious to come to Salt Lake and go to the LDS Business College. I had heard about it. Somebody from the college had been down there to the school, to Dixie High School, and told us about LDS Business College. So I was very anxious to go to that because I loved to type and do shorthand. And so I persuaded my folks to let me come to Salt Lake and go to school. And uh, I got on the bus by myself. I came up here to Salt Lake, and I was going, the only reason my folks would let me come was that, that my brother Eldon and his wife Mary lived here in Salt Lake. And they had agreed to let me stay with them that year. So I, I got off the bus on 33rd South, which was close to where they lived. I made my way over to their home, where I, which I'd never been to before, but I found it, <coughs> and went over to the, their house. And from there, I, uh, I would take a bus to come up to the, to the business college. So I, on my own, I was able to come up and register at the school and get started going to the business college. And I spent a year at the, going to business college. And uh, I decided after eight months of schooling, we had a month off before school would start again at the business college. So I went home for a month. And that was a really, really enjoyable month I spent with my parents. How old were you? <coughs> How old? I had turned 18 just a few days before I left to come to Salt Lake. And so by this time I was you know, going on 19. And I decided that when I came back, I would find myself a, a place to live. And in those days, the president of our country had set up all these little helpful things to help people go to school. Who was the uh, president? President FDR. And uh, he had started the CCC camp and WPA for men that needed jobs. And he had done all these things to help people, uh, help the, the I was born in depression times. And the depression was on all my growing up years. And so this president had done things that would, he thought would get the country out of the depression that was in. Anyway. So it was 1938 or 39? It was still 1938. And uh, there was a lady at the school that would find homes for the out of town kids to live in for work for their boarding room. So I had her find me a home. And I moved into that home and worked for my garden room for a while until I got a part-time job. I got a part-time job 
working for my sister-in-law, Helen Fuller's brother, who was an architect, starting out his own company, he and another fellow, starting out their own company, and they only needed part-time help. And so I'm sure that my sister-in-law, Helen, has something to do with him hiring me. But anyway, I worked for him part-time. And uh, I did that until I got a full-time job. Did you graduate from the business college? I didn't really graduate from it, but... But you took shorthand there? That's what you I did. took shorthand for all these years. And when I got a job, I never even had to use my shorthand, <laughs> which was frustrating. After I got this part-time job, I decided to move in with this girl that I had met at LDS Business College. And <coughs> fortunately, she I had gotten acquainted with these other two girls that had gone to Henniger's Business College, and they had just graduated and gotten jobs, and they wanted somebody to go in with them on a nice apartment, which uh, Margaret and I decided to do. She, we got acquainted with them and moved in with them, and from, for the next two years, we just had a ball living together and doing things together going to movies and to the Coconut Grove dance hall. And we all took turns cleaning the apartment and, and doing the things that we needed to do. We learned how to, to run a home while we were living together, the four of us. But then I met Grandpa. Where did you meet him? At the Coconut Grove Ballroom. And we decided to get married. And all the other girls, my friends, were getting married too. There was a war going on in England with Germany. And a lot of men were being sent to Germany or to England. But so anyway, my girlfriends were getting married. I was the first one of the bunch to get married. We moved out to a little apartment just south of where we had lived. And three months after we got married, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. And that started another war. World War. So now we were in World War II, uh, big time. So for the next few years were war years. Jesse Norman Hope. And you had five kids with Jesse? We had five kids. Laurie was the oldest. I worked until just before Laurie was born, and then I quit work. In those days, you didn't work up until <laughs> the day your baby was born. You would quit sometimes during the pregnancy. And so I did. And we kept thinking that Grandpa would have to go in the Army because they were doing what they called uh, conscripting men, sending them out greetings. If you got a, a letter that said greetings from the United States Army, <laughs> you knew that you had to go have a physical and be checked out for service. You could be in whichever service you wanted, Army or Navy or Marines or whatever. But when Grandpa got his letter, he had been working up in uh, Washington, the state of Washington, and building a building, helping to build a build up, building up there that was supposed to be top secret. But anyway, he got his greetings letter and he went and had his um, physical and was considered 4F. That meant that he had failed the physical. So he didn't have to go in the Army. 
So how many years were you married to Grandpa? Uh, 68 years. And you had five kids. Do you want to name all five of them? Yeah. Lori, Kenny, Dean, and Janet, and Kim. I learned to drive. I wanted to learn to drive while we were still living in Salt Lake, but I didn't. But we decided to move to Wyoming so Grandpa could start a business in the town of Green River, Wyoming. So we moved up there, and I didn't really learn to drive and while we lived in Green River. <coughs> but we moved over to the little town of Lyman, I mean Granger, which was, uh, oh, maybe five miles from my sister Phoebe and her husband, uh, John Blumel's ranch. And she would, they would come to Granger to pick up their mail almost every day and their groceries if they needed groceries. So we bought a little house. The business that Grandpa was, had started in Green River didn't go over very good, and he was able to get another job, join the union, the pipe fitters union, and get this job uh, close to Granger. So we moved to Granger, bought a little house because there wasn't any for rent, but we bought one that was dirt cheap, and we moved into that. That's when I started my driving lesson. And I did you? learn to drive. How old were you? I got my Wyoming driver's license, uh, driver's license, but when I came back to Utah, it wasn't any good. How old were you at that time? I was 30. And how many kids had you had? I'd had four kids four at that time. Well, I really don't know. I, we didn't make very many splurges, but I did buy a piano that uh, Grandpa wasn't in on the buying of it because I was afraid he wouldn't let me get it. So I went and bought a piano and had it delivered for Christmas. And he was working out of town, and I knew that it would be a big surprise for him. <laughs> Who played the piano? All of my kids took lessons. All the girls took lessons. But none of them followed through. So what are the things you've done in your life that make you the happiest? I guess the things that I have done that have made me happy, the happiest was the church callings I've had. I have been Relief Society president and I have uh, been a primary teacher and I've worked in Relief Society doing different callings for years on the ward and state level. And that has been my greatest happiness because I was able to get acquainted with lots of people. I learned to love very many people. I've had a lot of good friends, a lot of them. Some of them I met when I was Relief Society president in the first ward that we lived in. They were older women, but I learned to just really love them. And then we had a club of neighborhood women that I belonged to, and they were all special women. And I loved each one of them. And they were a, a big joy 
and uh, Oh, they were just my friends forever. A lot of good friends throughout your life? Hmm? A lot of good friends? All of those women were good friends. And then when we moved out to South Jordan, I had this special group that we went out to dinner with, and we called ourselves the Jet Set. And there was a, about eight or ten couples. And, we really liked each other and enjoyed each other's company. You and got that went on until we moved, had to move away. You got People together, started dying off. You got together once a month? We did. And how long did you live in South Jordan? 30. Well, we lived in that one house 30 years. And, that, and Grandpa built that house? <clears throat> Grandpa built the home with my help. Okay. Because I had asked the bishop for a temple recommend so I could go because I didn't think Grandpa was interested. And he said, well, how about your husband? I said, oh, he doesn't want to go. He'd rather smoke. And he said, can I talk to him? And I said, yeah, you can. So he called him in and talked to him, and Grandpa decided he wanted to go. Took him a year to give up tobacco, but he finally did. And do you remember what year it was, or how old your kids were? Um, the kids were, Laurie was um, almost of an age where she would have had to go by herself and get her own uh, work done. And I think we'd been married 22 years by then. I can't remember what year it was, but we got married in 41, 51, 63. So I think it was about 63. Was it nice to be sealed to everyone in your family? Huh? So you were sealed to everyone in your family? I was. That's nice, huh? By then I'd had Tim, my fifth child, and he was small when we went, five or six years old. My children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren I want to leave this message that I have a very strong testimony of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I know that my Redeemer lives, Jesus Christ, that He lives and that He is here to help us all to get through this life. We should pray constantly to our Heavenly Father for the help we need and He will give it to us. And I know the church is true. And I hope my children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren will find this out before they leave this life and that they will repent of their sins, which I have done. And I make new ones all the time, but I still repent of them. And I want them all to know that I love them all very much. And that when I go to the other side, which is probably where I am now when you hear this, that I will be watching over you and that you will still be part of my life. Thank and that you, I will Grandma. love you forever.